Welcome back, everybody, to the back-to-back -back Kelly Cup champion. Florida Everblades new season 2023-2024 campaign has arrived. Will Henschel alongside Jake Maurice for episode one of Swamp Talk, your official podcast for all things Florida Everblades. Jake, we're back. We're playing hockey. It's just good to be back in the arena with, you know, the sounds of skates on the ice, pucks on the boards, everything going on. It's just good to be back. Yeah, good to be back. And with a brand new podcast for a new season, when you're back-to-back -back champions, you got to step things up. And that's what we're doing this year. And watching the guys in training camp today, it was the first day, October 9th. We got a, about a week and a half before we actually get going for real, October 19th at Amway Center against the Orlando Solar Bears. It's going to be a fun year this year, watching the Everblades once again. Not that we were expecting anything different, but... <laughs> I, I did want to ask, when, when can we officially call it hockey season? Because the Everblades don't start until next week, but we've got AHL action and NHL action kicking off later this week. With our affiliates, yeah. The Panthers get started on Thursday. They're against the Minnesota Wild on the road up north in the land of 10,000 lakes or 1,000 lakes? 10,000. 10,000 lakes. And That's why then, the Lakers are called the Lakers, you know. Yeah, and then we got the, uh, and then we got the Charlotte Checkers, the AHL affiliate. They get going on Friday night. That game is in the Queen City against the Baby Penguins. The Baby Penguins. But also before that, we have Everblades preseason games, two preseason games, Orlando Solar Bears in Hertz Arena for both of them. Thursday, October 12th, and Friday, October 13th, both dropping the puck at 7.30. Both going to be a lot of fun. You can find your tickets online at floridaeverblades.com. Yeah, it should be a very entertaining start to the season. And, and, and really just going to be good to see the Everblades taking on an opponent that they're going to be seeing a lot this season, the Orlando Solar Bears. We're going to be seeing plenty of them right up I-75, cross over to I-4. You're going to be seeing those guys quite a bit this season. But it's it's really going to be eye-opening. This is a, we're, we're officially in training camp. The players are back on the ice. The roster, for the most part, is worked out for the guys that we're going to be seeing a lot. Still some question marks up in the air, but we're, we're back to playing hockey. We've The regular season is just on the horizon. And now all we got to do is really wait, kind of digest everything that's going on. And these two preseason games are going to be a good way to kind of get, get an idea of what the team's going to look like. Well, yes, that's all there is for us. But certainly for the coaching staff, there's going to be a whole lot more to it, right? You've got guys battling for lines, for spots in the lineup, trying to just make the team. You've got guys coming back. You need to figure out where they fit in with some of these new guys. If you can find some people who are able to build some instant chemistry so that you're ready to go for opening night with some lines that you're really confident in, confidence in to get you a big goal that would go a long way there's a good cast of returning characters for this year's everblades group but certainly some of the main architects of the back-to-back -back kelly cup championship crew are gone john mccarran blake winicky mike neville they've all gone off into retirement a couple of players have gone overseas other guys are on different echl teams or some ahl squads a guy like brandon hickey he was on loan with the Henderson Silver Knights for a lot of last year. This year, signs a full deal with them, so he's gone. So there's certainly going to be some spots in the lineup that this team has to fill in with some of the young guys, eager players coming in, hungry to make a name for themselves on what is currently on and off the ice, the top squad in the ECHL. Yeah, and, and we've got a really great guest today. Head coach Brad Ralph will be joining us in just a couple of Who minutes. Who else could it be for the first episode? I, I mean, no one else really makes sense. First day of training camp, first episode of the new podcast. It had to be coach, it right? Had to be, it had to be head coach. But he And he said, we talked to him uh, a, a little earlier today, and he said, and, and we'll talk to him about this, but he said, you know, we are the team to beat in the ECHL. The Everblades are the team that everybody kind of circles the calendar for. So there is a lot of pressure. This is a team that has won back-to-back Kelly Cup champions going for a three-peat, which has only happened, I don't know how many times in never, ECHL in the, history. Three-peats never happened in the ECHL. Everblades were the fifth team to repeat as Kelly Cup champions. But as you said, last year, though, everyone was doing the exact same thing. The Everblades were the team to beat, and no one could beat them. Not South Carolina, not Jacksonville, not Newfoundland, not Idaho in the finals. But now, coming back for a second year, as mentioned, with some players who've ridden off into the sunset or gone off to different clubs in different leagues, Sort of, it's not a completely blank slate for the team because they've still got, of course, Coach Ralph behind the bench who's going to put this team in a great spot for success. Has never missed the playoffs in his career with the, in the ECHL. You've got Cam Johnson in the crease who is 
always able to steal you a win or two, and sometimes you need that. Sometimes even, probably more than a win or two. Probably yeah. a, a handful of wins. That yeah, guy you was would, standing on you his You would head. say that, Mr. Former Goaltender. Yeah, You've yeah. still got some quality pieces up front. Joe Pendenza, he was a little bit late, but he's back. Logan Lambden, Sean Jostling, who led the ECHL, tied for the ECHL lead in p- playoff points. He's returned to the club. So you certainly have a good cast of returning characters for this show, but you've also got some fresh guys coming in, coming in from juniors, college, different ECHL teams, all of them eager to prove they deserve a spot to try and help this roster win another Kelly Cup. Absolutely. Some veterans, some new faces coming into the Everblades as Florida looks for a third consecutive Kelly Cup championship. But Jake, I think it's, I think it's right about time that we welcome in our first guest of Swamp Talk this season, head coach Brad Ralph. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking with him. Plenty to talk about after an intense first day at training camp. We'll catch up with him about all of that. We'll ask him about some of the other work he's done in the off season to improve his coaching game. Memories from that Kelly Cup championship last season, maybe talking about the one before that as well, and also getting him to elaborate a little bit on his comments about this team being the team to beat and how they can make sure they stay that way for another season. All right, let's do it. Well, for the very first episode of Swamp Talk, there was really only one person we could have as a guest, Will. You had to go to two-time Kelly Cup champion and the ECHL's all-time leader in playoff wins, head coach Brad Ralph. Coach, thank you very much for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, first day of training camp. You were pushing the guys pretty hard, especially at the end there, making them do quite a lot of laps, hard work on the boards, battles. Up-tempo day for the first day of training camp, for sure. Yeah, it was definitely a harder day. Um, You know, just... You know, we're kind of a marked man in this division specifically. Uh, everyone's going to be gunning for us. So, you know, we got to be ready for them, number one. But we have a short camp, right? We have three practices this week, three practices the following week, and then we're right into re- our first regular season game. So we just have to make the most of these these days. Uh, we had fitness, test- fitness testing this morning. And, um, you know, I just thought that went really well. Guys are relatively in good shape. Um, but there's nothing like being in, in – game shape so we simulated some practice um, <clears throat> some skates some drills that would simulate a, a game like shift and uh, yeah it was hard but you know guys uh, they worked hard and no one complained and that was uh, it's always nice from a coaching perspective hey, what's it like coming into a camp like this where you said you've only got three practices and then you've got two preseason games then three practices and then and then the game start to mean something so the window for improvement right now is very short. So what are some of the things? Obviously, there's a lot of players on this squad that won the Kelly Cup last year. So the skill is there. So what's what's something that's really got to be worked on this, these upcoming practices? Yeah, you know, just, you know, we have nine returning players um, that have a pretty good feel for the systems and how we want to play. Um, but everyone else is is new to the team and new to the system. So trying to get them comfortable with with how you know our style is our philosophies the the x's and o's part of it that's um probably number one and then from there you know you're just trying to build some chemistry who Mm -hmm. plays well who could play well with who and and trying to sort that out in the the brief moments you see in in practice absolutely yeah you know this as well as anyone coach to win in the kelly cup playoffs you need great goaltending you have cam johnson back for another year with the blades after back-to-back playoff mvps you also add evan cormier who's an experienced goaltender in this league having a strong tandem like that in net, i imagine gives you a lot of confidence going into this season yeah you know you you want your goalies to uh, to give you a chance to win every game um you know we saw last year we had a you know a better start um you know our second half wasn't as strong as you'd like it to be, but fortunately we made it in the playoffs. So uh, just that being said, you need your goalies to give you a chance every night because you're, uh, you're, there's going to be a lot of fluctuation in your roster throughout the season. So fortunate to have uh, CJ back, you know, two-time Kelly Cup MVP, um, a leader on this team, uh, you know, just a guy that's very confident and encouraging for our group. So he's, he's unique in that respect. Most goalies are quiet and kind of in their own world, but... Um, CJ is a team guy trying to make sure that the boys are playing the right way and um, you know he has a bit of a relationship with Evan Cormier they played together in Binghamton I believe a few years ago so they know each other they get along really well and I I believe they'll push each other to you know to perform at their best and yeah great tandem and you know we'll probably alternate um, as as much as we can early in the season get both guys equal looks and then you know see where that takes us. 
without giving away too much of the playbook right now, it seemed like in, in the first practice this morning that we saw, there was a lot of a lot of short ice drills, a lot of very quick drills, and we could even hear you talking. You know, at thirty second whistles. How much of of this season is going to be kind of dependent on? that fast style of hockey, you know, breakout plays, transition goals, th things like that, that you're looking for kind of quick, punchy action. Yeah, you know, I try to simplify or I'm trying to simplify training camp to just make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're using both both sheets on the rec side here. So it's um, allowing us to have better ice um, and push the guys a little more in that regards. But it's nice as a player, you know, your first time with your team, it's you've got clean ice, you can make good passes and and make better plays than when uh, you know after the ice gets choppy. So, yeah, the quick transition, the the reloads is something we were um, you know stressing today. But there's just it's just day one, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna keep uh, keep getting better, and um, <clears throat> you know it, it is a north south game. Things are happening quick, and I just think. You know, I kind of anticipated having a few more players in camp than we had today. So um, you're always making these small adjustments throughout practice and throughout training camp based on the, the number of players you have. Um, so I was, you know, the big picture was I thought we'd have closer to 30 players and um, just make it really efficient and less kind of confusion on the ice. And that's why kind of today's practice was designed that way. So we'll see. We'll keep making adjustments as the week goes on. But, but yeah, we're trying to establish work ethic. We're trying to establish pace of play. Um, and, and then from there, just trying to simplify the systems. Yeah, you mentioned players that are going to be added to camp as we go along. Some of those guys will be coming from the Charlotte Checkers and will most likely be members of the Everblades on opening night. So when you're talking about the guys towards the fringes of the camp right now, the guys who are competing for spots on this team, how do you keep in mind what they're doing in camp while also considering that some of those spots that they're vying for are going to get taken by these guys coming down from the AHL? Well, we don't, you know, <clears throat> you anticipate some players coming down, but we don't know for certain. Uh, I think there's already been a couple players that have been claimed off waivers um, that the Panthers put on, and, you know, there's a trickle-down effect. So, um, <clears throat> you know, you... Like I said, you anticipate those players coming down, and, and that's great, but there's always a chance that someone gets hurt or those players don't get sent down. So you're going to need those players that are in camp to, to battle and, and earn those spots. And I think we do have – our four group is pretty thin right now, but certainly we have a number of defensemen here that are fighting for probably two spots that I see. So um, – <clears throat> And yeah, so <laughs> a lot of variables, a lot of things change. And it's like, I wish I could give you the, the black and white answer. But, uh, you know, I don't really know day to day how how things are going to shake out with the roster and, and transactions. I, 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 I hate to, to bring up all these X's and O's questions on the first day of training camp. So we'll kind of do a little bit of pivot. But just for you personally, just with, with two Kelly Cup championships, what have the past, you know, 24 months meant to you with, with, with two incredible ba uh, winning seasons and just all the great players and all the great moments that have happened. What has it been like for you to see all that from, from right behind the bench? Um, validating, I guess, is the right word. I, I think as a coach, I've had a lot of great years. Um, you know, I lost in the finals in 2018. My first year, I lost in the finals. Went to the conference finals, I think, three times. Um, so there was always that little doubt in the back of my mind, like, you know, can I push the team over the, over the top? Uh, am I good enough as a coach? And, you know, you win the first one, all right, you know, it's just a great sense of accomplishment and emotion. And then you win the second time and it's, it feels like you, you're validating that you're, you know what you're doing, you're good at what you do, you can replicate it with a different team. Um, so that, I, I guess that's how I felt after, um, you know, to try to thinking back and processing how, you know, how that's affected me. And is that kind of a message that you've relayed over to, to your players about, you know, validation, you know, getting over the hump and just, you know, by sheer determination, you know, believing in yourself that, that you are where you need to be, you're, you're as good as you think you are, that, that sort of that kind of mentality? Yeah, I thought, you know, our last year's group, um, you know, we finished fourth in our division. We felt undervalued, underappreciated a little bit. And um, you saw that in playoffs. A lot of our returning players were our best players. And the guys, um, they proved. They proved that they were champions, you know, that the first time wasn't a fluke. And 
they were able to uh, to do it in pretty pretty clean fashion last year. So it'll be the same message this year. You know, we've got an opportunity to win um, for a third year in a row that's never been done in ECHL history, and I think that would really, you know, it would feel like it's cementing us as as one of the best teams or organizations in in the ECHL. This year, new assistant coach for you behind the bench. Anthony Peters replaces Jesse Kalicki, Jesse who got the head job in Fort Wayne. What is it about Anthony Peters? I know he's a former player. You're familiar with him from his time as a goaltender for the Everblades a few years back. But what is it about him that you've seen in the summer and in this first day of training camp that makes you confident that he is the right guy to join you behind the bench? Yeah. It, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot will be... Um, uh, you know, determined yet for him, he's never coached. So um, there's a lot of aspects of the job that he's learning for the first time, which is, for me, it's exciting, um, you know, to bring someone in that's, everything's new to him and uh, it's forced me to slow down and maybe uh, explain myself a little better better to him. But uh, Anthony, the, the reason why I hired him um, <clears throat> was number one, just he brings a lot of the values that, that we look for in players. Uh, he's, he's a tremendous, uh, he's got tremendous work ethic. He's high character, good moral person, and um, and he's detailed. So he's already challenged me in a number of ways. You know, at this level, we're not just coaches; we're travel agents, we're um, property managers, we're you know, you go down the list. But, but therapists, <laughs> all of it, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's done a great job already of like questioning me on certain things we've done, and it's made me think on another. Um, you know, work through the next layer that we're we're dealing with. And what is, what do you think the benefit is of, of having a former player and a, a fairly recent former player kind of join you on the bench? As, and now you've, the, the player experience and now the, the ECHL experience especially, not just on the ice but off the ice is, is so heightened and, and you can see things from so many different angles and see, th see things through kind of a, a historical lens do you think that'll yeah. help the team in the long run yeah you know he still sees it from a player's perspective mm -hmm. right he hasn't uh completely come over to the dark side of coaching <laughs> yet so uh um, just give it time yeah no but he's he's seeing it from a player's perspective like you know they walk into the rink for the first time what do they see mm -hmm. they walk into the apartment for the first time what do they see and and that you know there's the layer of detail or the work ethic he want he's he wants to impress them. He wants them to enjoy their experience and, and um, you know, for it to be the best possible situation for them. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, great, uh, it, it's a great set of eyes, um, you know, just his ability to. And the other part of it would be to communicate with the players, right? He's still, he's younger, much younger than I am, and he's able to, to talk to them and really understand what, you know what they're looking for in their hockey career and and what they're looking for outside of the arena as well so yeah it's just different right mm -hmm. i'm the old guy now that has the experience on the coaching end of it but uh, pd brings um, just a younger you know more enthusiastic look you've mentioned and we've mentioned this is the first day of training camp for everyone except for you because you spent some time as a guest coach with the Florida Panthers at their training camp back in September. Some of the drills we saw out there looked like they were taken from the Panthers yeah. camp. So talk a little bit to us about that experience and what it was like being a part of an NHL training camp as a coach. Yeah, I was very appreciative of, of Paul Maurice to, uh, to invite me over. You know, I've been doing this, I think 14 or I don't know how many years I've been a head coach, but uh, it's the first time anyone's ever offered to um, you know, for to invite me to to come to main camp, and uh, it was a real privilege. I mean, just it was one very cool because we we play a lot of the same systems and the philosophy is is very similar. But uh, obviously, Paul and his staff is uh, operating on a, a very high level, and you know they're one or two layers into the technical side of the X's and O's, or um, you know just in their into their approach. So it was educational for me and. Um, you know, I, was, I told Paul when I left, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't, I wasn't able to offer you a little more because I feel like I was, I was the one learning and, and taking everything in. But, um, but yeah, you know, as a coach, you're always 
trying to evolve, right? The game is, is always changing and, and you're trying to evolve as a coach and, and translate that to your group, no matter what the level is. So um, I thought it was an ability or an opportunity for me to, to get better as a coach. And, um, you know, that's what I love about my job. And it was also a chance for you to catch up with one of your old players, Stephen Lorenz, who now plays for the Panthers. I know he's happy to be in South, on Southeast Florida, the other side of Alligator Alley. What did you think seeing him again? Yes, it was great seeing Stevie. We've uh, stayed in touch over the years, and he played his first pro year here with us when he was uh, signed with the Carolina Hurricanes. He played the following year, played half a year with us, and um, worked his way up to the NHL. So it's something that I'm really proud of. I know our organization's proud of that. Um, you know, there's a player, a young player, that was able to climb the ranks and ultimately end up as an NHLer. So Stevie was awesome, very welcoming to me, and he's got fond memories of his playing time here with the Everblades and. He, um, I thought he was awesome at camp, and he, he was like, yeah, I'm going to come over. And he's, he asked me if he could come over and say hi to the guys, and, uh, of course, I said yes if his uh, schedule permits it. But, um, yeah, great. You know, he's just a great person and, and happy to see him doing so well. So if the players get any complaints about the skating drills they're getting, we, we, have a, we, can, we can point some fingers to the Panthers coaching staff? Yeah. <laughs> well, they actually, the skate today um, I stole from Paul. It was a 45-second you know sprint per group and um at the end of the day it was it's a hard skate and i told the guys i said the panthers did it and they didn't complain and i said neither did you so i really appreciate that <laughs> but um yeah it seems like all of the drills are somewhat similar but um i mean paul is a very intelligent man and you know he's got little adjustments little tweaks that that make the drill that much more challenging or or that much more educational for the players so um yeah it was uh it was fun to implement some of his stuff today. Definitely. How, how much, when you, when you say educating the players on a new drill, like, is, it, is that something that you try to do every training camp or even every practice? You know, let's, let's try to teach the players something new to try to challenge them even further. I mean, even in the middle of a, of a, you know, of a slog of an ECHL season. Well, you know, you can, you can emphasize different, components even within the same drill mm -hmm. so what i'm emphasizing in training camp will change you know come march of this season so you're trying to evolve the players and develop them um the drills don't change that dramatically but what you emphasize within the drill does gotcha. well you've been great for us coach just one more question and it goes back to what you've said about everyone is going to be gunning for this team this year we are going to be everybody's measuring stick their statement game, they want to show that they can take down the champs, at least during the regular season. So when you're prepping the guys this year, particularly the guys that don't have a ring with this club, what is it that they need to have ingrained into their hearts before they can step on the ice for that opening game October 19th against the Solar Bears so that they're ready to defend the title once again? Yeah, it's just you've got to be tough. I think that's the one thing that I, I tell all my teams, and it's not – fighting or, or hitting necessarily, but um, each player is tough in their own way, right? Whether you're mentally tough or you're, you're physically tough or, um, you know, you're, you're tough on pucks or tough on the body. There, there's all these different ways to show your toughness. And um, when teams come in here, they're playing us so hard that you, you've got to show your toughness whatever way that is. You know, if you're a goal scorer, then you got to bear down on your opportunities and be tough that way. So. Um, you know, it's it's not easy to get everyone's best every night, but it does make you a better hockey player, and ultimately, make it makes you a better team. And I think that's um, you know made playoffs a little bit easier for us. Just you know how hard we've had to play all season long. Well, we're certainly looking forward to you guys playing some tough hockey when you get behind the bench again, October nineteenth against the Solar Bears for opening night. Coach, thank you so much for joining us for our first episode of Swamp Talk. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, thank Will. You. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you so much, head coach Brad Ralph. Guest numero uno on Swamp Talk, the first one of the season. Yeah, and, uh, natural. Giving us a lot of good insights into yeah. what we can expect this season. I mean, I felt like we were asking him a lot of questions, but, I mean, for, for a day one interview, he had a, a whole lot of answers for us. Well, yeah, he always does. He's a real cerebral guy. I mean, with the success he's had behind the bench, you'd kind of expect it, right? But he's certainly he's great to talk to, great with the players. And you could see it in the training camp. There was already, you'd expect it from the guys coming back, but there was already among the new guys quite a bit of buy-in. As he said, nobody was complaining. There was no huffing and puffing about any tough drills or something. Everyone here was energized and 
in tune with what he wanted for this first day of training camp. And that's big, right? You know, no team is going anywhere if they don't believe in their coach. And this team clearly believes in their coach. You got to have buy-in. You got to have buy-in to have success. And, and this is a team that has certainly bought into the system. It's and worked. certainly had success. It's yeah. worked two times in a row. It's probably, it, it should work again. Yeah, we'll should. see. But there's some strong teams. And one of them is going to be the Everblades opponent for two straight, two straight preseason games. And then the season opener on, on October 19th. Two preseason games this week against the Orlando Solar Bears, Will. Yeah, that should be a, a really fun matchup. Thursday and Friday, both here at Hertz Arena at 7.30. And this is a, a really good primer for the Everblades. Like you said, this is, you know, the division is very tight-knit. You, you see the same teams quite a bit. Orlando, uh, the Everblades will be seeing a whole lot. A lot. So two, for, for two preseason not, games. Not quite 2021 when they play 27 times. We're not quite there anymore, but thankfully. we'll certainly be seeing that a lot. But, but two teams against, or, or two games, I should say, against a team that you know is going to be tough. Is, you, yeah. you know every single game against them is going to be a fight. And especially when the Everblades take that trip up to Orlando, mm -hmm. that challenge becomes even tougher. So, so now this should be a really good way to get the legs going, to get, to get everybody back, not just into a practice mindset, but into mm -hmm. a game-to-game -game mindset where, you know, if you have a bad result, you just flush it, you get on with the next one. If you have yeah. a good result, you try to you pick it up, I mean, you carry it into the next one. There's not two points on the lines for these first two no. games, but there is still plenty to play for. You've got guys competing for ice time, guys competing to be Everblades at the end of this training camp. You've got guys who are trying to look for more expanded roles on the power play, maybe, or guys who want to show that they can do certain things to get themselves more opportunities. And from the team perspective, you want the cohesion, you want the buy-in and the commitment to the system to show things are going the right way. You want to show that you're playing at a high tempo, high pace, even in a game that doesn't mean anything. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we know no guy's going to make the team just because he scores a goal in a preseason game. But you can certainly strengthen your case to make the yeah, team if you're help. playing a strong 60-minute effort every night. Absolutely. That's going to go a lot further than potting in a rebound where your line mate was the one who got everything going, right? Yeah. And on the other side, it helps that they're playing Orlando because this is a team that has the longest playoff drought in the South Division. They haven't made it to the postseason since 2019. This is a team that kind of fell off at the end of last year, was really unhappy with the way their season ended, talking with people in that organization. And it's a team that's got some big reinforcements coming in. Aaron Luchuk, who led the entire league in scoring a couple seasons ago he went over to Europe now he's back in Orlando that's a huge piece coming into their lineup the Solar Bears are a team that is tired of the status quo with the Everblades on top of the division yeah. they are a team that sees the Everblades as one of their biggest rivals and you know they would love more than anything to be the team that ends the title defense so it's obviously it's not going to happen this week it's preseason hockey but championship is in June so we, we, yeah, we got a long way plenty, to go for that. Plenty of time. But it all starts this week. It all starts yeah, today. No doubt. No one's going to win the Kelly Cup based on their training camp. But as crazy as it might say, seem to say this, it is possible to lose out on a championship in training camp if you're not working the right way. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's very fair. You gotta, it, it's got to be early. It, it, it's got to be the kind of thing that you commit to off the bat. And I think mm -hmm. this is a, what the Everblades have coming up Thursday and Friday this week is a great way to show the buy-in mentality. Yeah, you heard the former captain of the Everblades, Ben Masella, talk about it last year going into the playoffs. When it was a team going in as the fourth place team in the South Division, how are they going to beat top end South Carolina? How are they going to repeat as champions? It's because they've done it before and they have the championship DNA. Mm. Now, not everybody in this New group has it with the Everblades, but you can transfer it to those guys so everybody goes in, just like they did last year with the guys like Oliver Chow and Cole Moberg that weren't on the team in 2022 that won it all, but were on the team in 2023. So you, you, there's a lot of experience on this mm -hmm. team. Guys that know what it takes to get to the top and are mm -hmm. extremely ready, willing, and able to do it again in the 2023-24 campaign. Yeah, and even some of the guys actually that haven't won the Kelly Cup with the Everblades. Like, Zach Sekos, he's one of the new guys. He went on a deep run with the Utah Grizzlies back in 2022. They sure, advanced yeah. all the way to the Western Conference Finals. So those guys, sure, they might not have gone all the way, but they've gone quite, quite yeah. a ways towards it. They know what it takes to succeed in a deep playoff run. Some of the guys coming out of juniors, they've gone on deep playoff runs over there. And sure, pro hockey is very different, but they know what it's like to be in the slog of 
competing for a championship and bouncing back from a bad game and a bad shift and a tough week or whatever. I mean, obviously you hope that the Everblades are going to play 72 excellent games, but that's challenging. It's almost impossible to be at your best every single night of every single game, every single year. But this is a team that expects to be at the top of the ECHL again this year. This is a team that certainly has the capability to be at the top of the ECHL again this year. And we saw a little bit of that today in training camp with how hard everyone competed and the attitude of everyone competing. So it's going to be a lot of fun when we get going for those preseason games. I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to seeing what some of the new guys can do. And of course, just looking forward to Everblades hockey being back most of all. No doubt, no doubt. We've got two more days of practice. Then we've got the two preseason games, Thursday and Friday of this week. Both of them at home at 7.30. Both of them against the Orlando Solar Bears. And then next week, we get things going for real. And yeah. that's, when, that's when things really start heating up, Jake. Yeah, we get things going for real. Three straight road games to start the year, which can honestly be a little bit of a blessing in disguise. The travel's not far. You're going to Orlando and Jacksonville. Yep. Certainly manageable trips from... Uh, miles on the body perspective mm -hmm. and they're familiar buildings where you're used to playing these guys especially the returners not like going up to to newfoundland and back no, for the, certainly for the not like the eastern conference finals <laughs> or idaho all the way out for the finals that's a hike that is that was two long hikes that the everblades were able to get to the top of the mountain hike it through those <laughs> but now you get to start on the road against familiar opponents and then you get to come home and you get to raise the banner again october 28th seven o'clock saturday night the third Kelly Cup banner and the second in a row goes to the rafters. So much hockey coming up, and it's going to be a lot of fun all season long here on Swamp Talk. Absolutely. It is banner-raising season here in Southwest Florida. Yet again. I'm Will Henschel. He's been Jake Maurice. Thank you so much for joining us on Episode 1 of Swamp Talk, and we will see you on Episode 2.